Hey everybody, I'm Maureen Ashley, or Mo, and I'm a trainer uh, with Mo Fitness. That's my company, but I'm also one of the trainers uh, with uh, NicoleWilkins.com. And today I wanted to help you out with a really important subject, and that's mindset. And when you think of mindset, you think, oh my God, super hard to change. Where do I even begin? How do I do it? Because your mindset is everything. How you approach every single task that you have in your life, it could mean success or it could mean failure based on your approach. And a big, a big start to your mindset is going to be how you approach your day. So today, I'm going to specifically go through like a morning and an evening routine that can really help set your day up for success and leave you feeling relaxed and stress-free as you turn in for the night to go to sleep. So let's just take a look at probably the average person. The alarm goes off. <clears throat> You probably already hit snooze two or three times. You got you get your kids to school. You've got to uh, get your significant other ready as far as just you know helping them get out the door. Uh, you have to get ready for work. Now you're stuck in traffic. Maybe not now because it's COVID, but um, you're stuck in traffic. Now you're late for work. Your boss isn't happy with you. And now you have, you know, eight hours of work that you have to get through and you have a crappy mindset. You already started the day off horribly wrong and chaotic is probably the best, best uh, word for that. So the way you start your day is definitely going to impact how you deal with the uneventful things that are gonna probably happen because when negative things happen to us, it's usually not something we've planned. It's usually something that has happened and depending on what frame of mind you're in, that's probably gonna dictate how uh, you deal with it. So if you want to split your, let's just take your morning routine, okay? Ideally, if you could take an hour to dedicate to yourself before you help out everybody else, that would be an ideal situation. And, and you're probably thinking, God, Maureen, I, I can't even get 10 minutes. Okay, so maybe all you can get in the morning is 15 minutes. Let's just start there. Let's start with baby steps. Now let's break that 15 minutes into five minute increments, okay? The first one is going to be physical activity. This is going to help wake you up, help decrease your stress, and this could be anything from, I took, I went for a walk outside, I did some mobility, some foam rolling, some stretching. Maybe it was a small yoga routine, something to get the blood flowing and to get yourself active. Could be body weight exercises. So the number one, first five minutes, number one is going to be getting physical, okay? The second one is going to be like a visualization, a meditation. This is where you're gonna either do a meditation. There's a great app called Headspace. They really do a great job of teaching you how to meditate because I think meditation gets a bad rap as if it's just for yogis and it's not, it's for everyone and you can do a meditation. You can visualize like, what is my, what do I want my day to look like? Take a, you know, find a space, a quiet space in your house, dedicate that space 
to that activity. That way, when you get into that space, you think, okay, relaxation, visual, visualization, I'm setting myself up for the day. So maybe you write down what, what are three goals that you have for the day? Or what's one thing I'm gonna accomplish today? Or what's, how do I wanna feel? How do I wanna go into the day? How do I wanna feel? Maybe I'm saying it out loud. Um, what things, what activities could I do today? Think about that, you know, what activities could I do to bring about the feelings that I want for the day? So now you got your 10 minutes in. You had physical activity for five. You had um, some type of visualization, meditation, goals, those types of things for the other five. The third five minutes is going to be all about learning, mastering your craft, excelling at your life. It could be in a real book, an audio book. Um, maybe you're looking up a new healthy recipe that you're gonna make for your family. Um, Maybe you're going to read about your business, learn a little bit more about your the business that you do. Um, maybe it's how can I help my kids get physically active? You're reading a book on that. Um, but all those things are there to now help put you in a space where you're like open. You're like open to learning new things and in evolving as a person. So right there, you've got a way different start to the first 15 minutes of the day. And my goal for you would actually be extend each one of those categories. So now maybe you're going 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And do that until you can, you can eke out as much time as you possibly can for yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself first, it's going to be really difficult to take care of the other people in your life and the other areas of your life. You know, there's a reason why they tell you on an airplane to put on your oxygen mask first before you help others put theirs on. Definitely need to take care of you first. And starting your day like this is going to put you in a more kind of centered, um, a calm more relaxed, less stressful position. And that way when life happens, your reaction to it will probably be a lot calmer. You'll probably be more um, present in your life, more present in this certain moment. Because when we look forward to the future, we get anxiety and that's not something that's going to help us out in the here and now looking at the things that are going to be coming at us. So we want to just really try to make an effort to be present in the moment and meditation really helps that out um, a lot. And it's going to give you just a really a big like open mind to what's out there what opportunities are out there, um, what advancements in your career could be out there because you're able to put forth a, a you know better, more successful effort in your job, in your career, uh, with your family. You can be more present with them. Think about how you would feel if you approached your day and like you approach your day where you put you first and you kind of like, if you look at it, like you filled your cup first. How much calmer and more helpful do you think you would be to your children if you guys didn't just roll out of bed screaming because everybody's late? You took some time, you know, you sipped your coffee, you, you took that time out of your day for yourself what would that look like? And maybe that's part of part two. Maybe that's part of being your visualization as to what would I want, my, how would I want my day to go? Do I want it to be chaos or do I want it to be 
calm because whether you want whether you want your life to be you know like a smooth sailing it's probably not going to be smooth sailing no one's life is smooth sailing and the more that we can approach things with like a level head the better off we're going to be but the most important thing about this uh, topic is that you're going to put yourself first and it's not selfish. It's called self care actually. So just to recap, if you don't take any time for yourself, start out with 15 minutes total. The first section of five minutes is going to be some type of physical activity, stretching, foam rolling, cardio, etc. The second one is going to be more of like a goals, a visualization, a meditation. And the third five minutes is going to be some type of self-improvement, learning, reading, something that's going to further you as a person. So I hope that this might give you some direction as to setting yourself up, setting a routine like in the morning for yourself and setting your day up to be successful and calmer and less stressful. And then when we look at the flip side, we look at the evening part of your day. When we look at that, we need to end the day similarly, similarly to the way we began it. So a lot of us are actually, you know, watching TV, getting all the stuff ready, and then we basically fall into bed or we fall asleep with the TV on. So if we look at how we began the day, we wanna kind of finish it off the same way. So I would turn off TV, phone, get all that stuff away from you at least an hour before you go to bed. Turn it off, put your phone into like a sleep mode, something where you can't be disturbed. And I also pull out Headspace at night too because they have like sleepscapes and these different things that'll help you, you know, relax before you uh, go to bed. And this is one is really huge. So what you go to bed thinking about is basically what your brain is about while you're sleeping. So this is a great practice. Write down three, three wins for the day. Three things that you did that you did really well and you're really proud of and they make they just give you that good feeling you know in here that you're like man that, that, that was really good and if you're struggling if you're having a day where you're like wins my whole day blew up well then maybe you're just looking at the simple things that I laughed. I laughed with my kids. We cracked up about something, you know, and I had a light moment in the midst of a heavy day. So sometimes you have to think really simple. You know, I went for a walk with my dog and it was so quiet because it just snowed. You know, those are things to be grateful for that you appreciated that. So write down those wins and then go back. You know, you can go back to that visual visualization and visualize like some big goals, some big dreams that you have for yourself and let your mind go to work on that as you sleep. So you can probably see a pattern with, you know, your, it's not about just like, ooh, positive thinking. Like there's actual things you can do to set yourself up to, to get your head, your head space in, in a more positive, positive frame. So it can be done. What I would do is I would write down what your routine is, what you decide your routine to be for the morning and for the night, and put it in the area that you're gonna like enforce these routines um, where you're gonna do those things. You know, it's your favorite chair in the living room and you have a little notebook and it tells you exactly what you're doing in the morning and what you're doing at night. So you're just trying to reinforce these new behaviors because we do not accept change very easily and that you your old stuff is it's going to resist you from from changing your routine up so the more that you can 
have it all lined up so you really don't have to think about it, you just have to go through it and do it, the better off you're gonna be. And we all know that the days and everything goes a lot better when we're better here. It's not necessarily what's going on, it's just, it's how we're processing everything up here. So whatever your goals, health and fitness goals, life goals, whatever, um, how you approach your day, your morning and evening routine is gonna be a game changer. If you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to discuss that with you further. Um, Maureen at NicoleWilkins.com or MOE, Mo at MoFitness.com and uh, on Instagram, MoFitness. Uh, reach out to me and I'd love to talk to you about it you know, further. But in the meantime, check out your morning and evening routine and see what things that you can add to your current one. All right, everybody. Have a strong day. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.